Hey everyone, yesterday I decided to break this video into two. So this is part two of my video. This is the one that includes Quantum Error, or Starfield, a bit of Square Enix, a bit of Sony, and a bit of Alan Wake. So on with the actual video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's see if we can get to at least 400 likes this time. I know 500 has been a bit of a stretch and usually just hit below 400. So let's see if we can hit above that 400. Do like and subscribe if you enjoy. And tonight I'm going to be streaming for Halloween, hopefully. And with that said, let me know in the comment section below or over at my community uh, channel where you know I've got a post up asking what games you'd like me to play on Steam. At the moment, I've got Alan Wake in my head on PC, playing it for GeForce Now. Let me know if... Uh, you want to see that or maybe some other horror games that's going to make me scared at my wits? This show's up to you. Right, on with the video. So this one is quite interesting because Quantum Error has been a game that has been talked about for a long time. It's made by four brothers and they have put their heart and soul into this game. They decided to come out on console war and start to downplay the Xbox saying that the Xbox's SSD was too slow, it was weak, it wasn't powerful enough, and only the supreme might of the PS5's SSD could ever handle this game. And then you got people like Unleashed coming out saying, Quantum Era, now one of my most anticipated games of the year. Thank you for taking advantage of PS5's beastly magical unicorn SSD and not degrading the experience down to bottom tier Xbox levels. So, as you can see, as soon as uh, the developer started to play co the console wars, the PS fans, especially like uh, Unleashed, jumped on the bandwagon and decided to ride that to high heaven. Of course, reviews didn't come out as well as they hoped, and hate to see him going through copium like this. Unfortunately, they didn't have the support of Xbox Shield review sites. Now he's blaming uh, Xbox uh, publications for, you know, <laughs> Xbox style publications not supporting the game to inflate the scores or else Quantum Error would have scored higher than both Redfall and Starfield. And as we can see here, do you remember my video I did recently where I said Starfield is living rent-free in their head still? As you can see here, it is still, to this day, living rent-free in this idiot's head. This pony, this waste of space, is still talking about Starfield. Well, I don't know what else you can really say about that. And he says, keep it up at Quantum Era. And we're going to actually get to the Metacritic score in a minute. But, you know, it's not enough for him, is it? But it continues. He says, be proud, guys. You made a better game than Redfall and Starfield. Keep it up. And he's saying this like it's a badge of honor. My dude doesn't even have a PS5. This idiot is preaching for a platform that he doesn't even own. He's literally blindly following a brand that he has no investment in. I mean, at least if he bought a PS5, you can say that he's invested $500 of his money, and then he's actually kind of taking that kind of mantle on board. But my dude hasn't even bought the console. He's literally just looking outside the window and going, ooh, I'm going to defend that today. And then he's making these sorts of comments. I mean, how stupid can you get? And here you have the Metacritic scores, PlayStation 5 critic reviews, it's got a 47 generally unfavorable. Now, TRG gave it a 60. PlayStation Brazil gave it a 55. Gaming Bolt gave it a 50. COG Connected, 50. Game Speed, 50. Gaming Trend, 40. And PlayStation Universe, you know, the, you know, the shills that he was talking about, gave it a 25. Reading, the only interesting part of Quantum Error is the premise. Hinting, at some intriguing cosmic horror ideas. Unfortunately, it's buried underneath rubble filled with bad controls, janky performance, and humdrum gameplay. Unless a complete overhaul could be implemented, there's no way a patch could ever save this game from itself. So, as much as I wanted this game to succeed, even if it was a PlayStation 5 exclusive, because, you know, four developers putting their hearts and souls into this, would have actually, been, you know, it would have been a really nice story to show AAA developers, what they're doing wrong, and, you know, but it wasn't meant to be, and they released a game that just simply wasn't ready to release, and now PlayStation fans are blaming Xbox, 
and saying that they didn't have enough Xbox shills to pad up the score. You can't make this shit up. Of course it gets worse, because now the developers are actually blocking people. They're just blocking them. Anyone that has anything with a criticism towards the game, they are just actively being blocked, and they are now being ridiculed all over the internet. Same, but few re receipts. I am sure they are deleting everything as fast as they can. The Red Dragon Xbox Series S makes it a challenge to develop for the Xbox platform. A major dev just said it, not me. This post is from an account that no longer exists. Uh, they're just deleting all their stuff now because they are pretty much slapped in the face because all PlayStation fans were bigging up this game like the next Spider-Man, the next God of War, the next Last of Us. And, well, they just didn't deliver. Quantum Era devs being candid about their experience in game dev across two ecosystems isn't console warring or fanboying. Hiding it would be. They're telling the, their truth. Something I thought you all wanted devs to do this whole time. Disappointed to know that's not the case. But the problem is these developers were also turning around and saying that this can only be done on the PS5. It's buttery smooth, silky gameplay. Everything is great. There is no problems. And honestly, I haven't played it yet. I've only seen a few videos and it looks really bad in terms of performance. But they they could have stopped there but instead they decided to turn around and attack the xbox platform which in my eyes at that point is fanboying and what guapzilla who is a playstation fanboy is saying that it's not he's chatting shit uh, quantum mirror has officially gone gold uh dreamcast guy was over the moon because it was a playstation exclusive not coming to xbox now, of course, he's later now released a video saying that this is the worst game of 2023. So uh, all of these people have egg on their face. It's uh, just very, very sad to see, honestly. And as you can see, they can't stand criticism because the moment uh, they release a post saying that they can stand criticism, but and they take their criticism as a compliment because they're being compared to AAA games. But in the meantime, they're also going and not accepting criticism and basically blocking people. So all in all, when it comes to Quantum Era, the problem they have is that they really hyped this game up. They really bigged it up. They allowed the community to run with it. They supported the fanboyism. They supported the console wars. They downplayed the Xbox Series X. They ridiculed it. We're seeing games like Alan Wake 2 performing much better on xbox and arguably that is one of the best looking games out there right now and these developers there yeah, they are indie developers they are four people but they didn't even give it a chance they didn't even come out they just literally came out and said the series x isn't good enough the ssd is too slow but in actual fact it really isn't through direct storage sfs pff you know it's been proven that it can equal that of the PlayStation's uh, SSD and maybe even push further. You just need to put the work in. And I guess they just wanted to be, you know, they just wanted their game to be on PlayStation. After all, they have openly said that PlayStation is their preferred platform. And they have said this multiple times. So after bigging it up so much, after kind of making such a big debacle of how perfect their game is, how perfect it runs, how smooth it runs, and how amazing it is, and how fluid it is. For it to come and crash and burn like this, and for them to start, you know, blocking people because they're basically criticizing the game after they uh, paid money for it, or in some cases they got a free review copy, like PlayStation Universe, and giving it a 2.5. Uh, in the end, it is what it is. I mean, they knew the state of the game when they released it, right? They knew the state of the game when they published it. And they believed that that state of the game was okay. So the blame has to stop with them at this point, And they have to take that responsibility. Because for all the hype that this game took, it's crash and burned. And I guess that's another one that the Xbox dodged a bullet on. Just like uh, the Lord of the Rings game, right? The one, the kind of Sims build your cities type game. Because that got like a four and a three and a two as well. Well, on with the next story. While all that is said and done, Forbes journalist Paul Tassie, senior contributor, says two months later, 
Starfield continued performance is kind of unbelievable. And you got Peter over here saying two months after release Starfield, still in the top seven most played games on Xbox with an average of 50k concurrent Steam players, which is pretty damn awesome. They can't fathom why we love this game. Let them have the game of the year. Starfield is the game of the generation. I kind of agree with this because Starfield is going to be played for years to come. It's just one of those things. It's uh, really nice to see that, you know, appreciation is being shown for the game and more and more people are now starting to support the game. I do have another video coming for Starfield. It may not arrive tomorrow because it's Halloween, but it is coming uh, probably the day after. It's a really good one, and uh, I really hope you enjoy it, especially if you play the game on PC. As you can see here, we've got another one from Ginger Prime. Are Square Enix insiders dumping stock? Something doesn't make sense. Plus, Sony's expenses skyrocket, but are they investing in something big? I asked an expert, and this is what they said. Most analysis are recommending a strong buy on stock. Their cash flow is fantastic, but their stock price has plunged 50%. The only thing I can see is their overhead cost jumped by 20% without a corresponding increase in revenue. The numbers just don't add up when you consider how hard their stock price has been hit. But since most of the stock is held by insiders or institutional investors, somebody no inside information and must be dumping their stock. And they also said, wow, Sony has taken a beating as well. Their administration costs have just gone crazy in relation to revenue. They could be investing in new products. And in response to this, Paul's Gaming Live says, you would not be dumping stock if you knew a buyout was coming. You would be buying for a start. That is true. Dumping stocks is often because of negative news pending. So there is that as well. It's down to uncertainty with Square. Final Fantasy 16 was not it. Forspoken was a mess for the time. It did improve later, but the launch was a mess. And money invested in an era when AAA games are costing one to two hundred plus million. Selling a few million copies is bad. I mean, two point five million copies from Spider-Man. I don't believe even covered the cost of the game. So I think they need like four or five million copies sold before they can actually cover the cost of the game. AAA development has become very risky and uncertain. So that's an interesting one to follow up. Of course, this is the one where we're going to finish up. Xbox, as we all knew it, is the best console to play Alan Wake 2. The PS5 with 46 critic reviews scored an 89. PC with 32 with a 91. Xbox with a 4 critic reviews has scored a 95. Now the drawback with 4 is that if you get higher reviews, you're going to get a really high score. And this, on paper at least, is challenging the likes of Baldur's Gate. That's pretty damn impressive. Now the Xbox version of the game will in fact run better than the PS5 version. No matter how much they actually want to sugarcoat this, the Xbox Series X version, and then maybe the Series S, I'm not sure, but it should do, actually supports what is called mesh shading. And this actually helps with performance quite a bit. And in the videos that we've seen, the Xbox version of the game is running locked at 60 FPS, whereas the PlayStation version is dropping down to 56, 55, 58, and it's kind of fluctuating between 55 and 60 in certain scenes that they were actually showcasing. Whereas the Xbox with its mesh shading is actually running at full 60 lock. In fact, it's quite possible that the Xbox version is actually running closer to 70 to 75 frames per second because that is what mesh shading does. It improves frames performance. The mesh shading on the PS5 is not supported. They support primitive shading, which is a much more degraded, lesser version of mesh shading. And therefore, it you know, if Remedy, as well, not if, as Remedy is using mesh shaders, the Xbox version naturally is going to run better, which then in turn makes it a better version. And as you can see, he said it here, Xbox, as we all knew it, is the best console to play Alan Wake 2. And of course, you're going to have a few down here that are getting very upset at the fact that he said that. Community notes. This post is not factual. The reviews are limited for Xbox. Doesn't reflect the accuracy of his post. There is no community notes here. Xbox keeps a stable 60 with mesh shaders. 
where PS doesn't on it does run better on Xbox. Not fake news at all, as people have done comparisons. Mind you, it's a few frames, but doesn't make it any less factual. And he hasn't responded to what I said, but I guess he's uh, not going to uh, say much after that. Good to see all four of the Xbox fans are enjoying the game. I mean, you can clearly see here now that they are starting to get really salty and, you know, find reasons to uh, downplay that 95 on an Xbox because they just have to find something, right? It's impossible for them not to. But folks, that is going to be the end of the video. Let me know what you think in the conversation below. Let me know what you'd like to see me playing on Halloween, Adam Wake, uh, PC or Xbox. Um, either one doesn't bother me the pc version will look better and i will be playing it for geforce now which means that i'll be getting a 40 80 graphics card performance so that would be also cool as well but i'll leave it up to you right that is the video thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one remain legend